In this video we're going to take our signet ring into ZBrush and project the deer uh, image that we had created in the previous lesson. So this is the ring that Chris Botha had created and sent through. Um, the trick in bringing this into ZBrush is that if you just create uh, an OBJ from this in Rhino, uh, and I'm going through Rhino, so I'm not sure if this is the same story if you went go through Matrix, but if you create the OBJ of this from Rhino and bring it into uh, ZBrush, you get, a, you get a funny error, and I'll show you what that is first. So I'm just going to go and select this, say File, uh, Export Selected, and we'll save this out as an OBJ, and we'll just call it Signet, right? Uh, we want it to be a polygon mesh because ZBrush uh, accepts only polygon based files. Um, I'm not sure, I don't care about curves because this will be ignored anyway. Um, we would like the world axis to be Y up. Uh, Rhino is Z up by default, but we should have it Y up if we're bringing it into uh, ZBrush. And I will say OK. Um, I tend to like to have a little bit more geometry because uh, ZBrush is a software that handles lots and lots of geometry. So I'll just say there, that's fine, and I'll hit OK. So if I bring this into ZBrush now, here's what we get with ZBrush to begin with. Um, when you first load up ZBrush, this is akin to what you'll see, but I have kind of a special layout at the moment. So I'm just going to try to get back to a layout that more or less is similar to what you would see when you open up ZBrush, and I think this is what this is. You can customize ZBrush, and that's what I've done with my version of it. Uh, so when you first open it up, um, hopefully it looks something like this. And this little um, sort of hot box that's up here, uh, just get rid of it. <laughs> you don't need it. Uh, so I just hit click on hide. And um, trouble with ZBrush is that sometimes the interface is a little bit wonky to, uh, to deal with. Uh, things kind of overlap each other. So I'm just going to make that big real quick so I can hit hide. And so I can make that small again. <laughs> Go away. All right, so if I, um, if, in order to bring uh, this object into ZBrush, I need to go into the tool menu. And now this is a fly-off version of the tool file menu that we see over here. So uh, by default, this should actually be loaded into the right-hand uh, column of your ZBrush menu, which is great because it is the thing that you'll probably end up using the most in ZBrush. And there's a whole bunch of other little menus that can be uh, sort of clicked and dragged over to uh, either side here where you can uh, sort of lock and dock stuff. Um, we won't really worry about that too much in this lesson. So I'm just going to go to import. There's a couple different things when you're working in ZBrush. Um, if you were bringing in a ZBrush tool that you've already saved, you will load it as a tool. That's a .ztl file. But if you're bringing in uh, like an OBJ file, you'll need to import it. So just click on the import button. And I'll go find my uh, signet OBJ. There it is. And great. It's loaded into ZBrush, but it's not actually in your scene yet. So in order to bring it into your scene, you need to click and drag into the scene view. Okay. Now, this is pretty important. If you click and drag, and then you decide, OK, I'm going to orbit around my object by clicking and dragging again, this is what you're going to get. Uh, you draw, you keep drawing out a whole bunch of signet rings and your scene suddenly gets really cluttered and you start to hate ZBrush. Well, this is because ZBrush does kind of have its own little workflow. Um, we don't want to be doing this, obviously, so I'm just going to go ahead and just clear out my document by going to Document, New Document, and no, I don't want to save that. I do want to click and drag it out once. However, as soon as I've done that, I need to change the mode that I'm in. By default, I'm in draw mode, and that's where I'm clicking and drawing out this object. But what I need to do is change it over to edit mode. Just clicking on this button or hotkey T. Okay. As soon as I do that, you notice I get kind of a frame up to my uh, my scene view here, and now I can just left mouse click and drag all the way around my scene. So um, for those of you who are not entirely familiar with uh, ZBrush's um, navigation, it's pretty simple. Um, my first off, my recommendation is that the only real way to work in ZBrush is if you have a Wacom tablet or you know similar graphics tablet, because this is a pressure-sensitive program, and without a tablet, you're pretty much screwed. 
uh, because just working in a mouse is not so useful. In the case of this tutorial, we'll actually be able to get away with the mouse, um, but if for for part of it at least. Uh, but whenever we do any actual sculpting, you'll you'll definitely want to have the tablet. But here's the basic controls. To just uh, orbit around your scene, so long as you're not touching the model itself, you can uh, just left mouse click and drag, and you'll move around. All right. Um, if you want to go ahead and uh, pan around your scene, hold down Alt and left mouse click and drag. All right. Uh, and if you want to zoom in or zoom out, this is a little bit more tricky. Um, you can hold down Alt and left mouse click and drag and that will be panning but as soon as if you keep holding down left mouse click while holding down left mouse click let go of alt and keep dragging now you're zooming in and out a little bit of a strange one for that so that's left mouse click and drag and let go or i should say left mouse uh, click while holding down alt and then let go of alt a little bit strange also you can uh, do the same thing if you hold down uh I'm trying to remember here uh, control and right mouse as well. I just don't ever use that one simply because I'm so used to using alt. I'm a big Maya user so I'm used to using alt. Um, but control right mouse will do the same thing. And to be honest uh, you get really used to the controls very quickly. Um, you don't really think about them anymore. Okay so um, I had brought this file in simply to talk about the issues that you get with an OBJ that is directly created from Rhino. And here's what happens. There's a couple things that happen. First off um, you could think of um, ZBrush as a program that allows you to subdivide your geometry to really 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 fine levels and I'm talking about dealing in the area of, of millions, tens of millions of polygons. And that's fine. That's a typical way of working in ZBrush. Uh, but if you do that with this geometry here, um, here's what you'll end up with. Th that typical way of working would be to come over into the tool menu and to click on the geometry tab. If you click on this, it actually expands out a whole other menu. And you would just start dividing, subdividing your mesh, and you'd hit divide. And normally this would give you a nice, slightly smoother version. Um, without all of this fracturing. But uh, due to the way that Rhino exports its OBJs, uh, we get this really horrible fracturing. So going through this method obviously is not an option for us, but fortunately it's not our only method and it's certainly in this case not even the best method. So I'm just going to hit Control Z a couple times to undo. Uh, something to make mention about that too. What's nice about ZBrush is that your undo states are uh, are visible and interactive. So I can go back to an undo state um, and I can click forward through them as well. So, uh, which is quite nice. Now, the thing that we're gonna worry about in uh, ZBrush is not dividing the model, but using another feature called DynaMesh. And you'll see the DynaMesh menu here. If it's not expanded, just click on it, DynaMesh. And this will take the geometry and it will basically preserve the shape, but it's going to really, really, uh, at a very micro level, create um, perfectly even topology. And it makes it so that the model is uh, just like sculpting on clay, to be honest. So if I were to take a look at the, um, uh, the, all the polygons on this model at the moment, I just click on the poly frame icon. See, this gives me an outline of all those polygons, and you can see that it's uh, it varies. There's some big polygons up here, some triangles here, uh, some quads and whatnot. When I go into DynaMesh, it's going to do its best job to create quads everywhere and make them completely even across the surface. So let me just click off that real quick. Um, here's what's going to happen, and this is the issue we're going to get right away. Um, if I go down to DynaMesh and just click on that right now, it's going to think for a second. And as soon as I do that, notice this strange, kind of cool looking, but heavily problematic uh, tearing that's going on in the mesh. Well, that's not good. And that has to do with the fact that that OBJ that was created in Rhino directly is not tremendously usable, even when using DynaMesh. However, let me, do, let me go back and, and talk about um, the uh, polyframe again, so I can see the polygons on the surface. If I zoom in here, and hit polyframe again. Now you can see that 
it's a completely even uh, selection of um, polygons across the surface here. They're all quads basically with a few exceptions. Um, and this is going to give me something that's much easier to sculpt on. This resolution is not high enough for our purposes, but I'll, I'll come, when I come back with a uh, better version of the um, uh, the model here, um, we'll we'll go up to a higher resolution. So let me just undo real quick. I'll come out of Polyframe, and if I go back into Rhino, I'm going to uh, export another version of this, but this time I'm going to export it as an STL. So I'm going to go to File. Export selected uh, STL. Call the signet as well, and I'll just take the default. It's fine. I can't bring the um, STL in directly into ZBrush, which is kind of a lie because there is in fact a way, but it's not worth the effort um, because it brings it in at a weird scale, and I don't want to deal with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and use a secondary program, um, Netfab, which is free. If you don't have it, I recommend getting it because it's just a really nice program. And I'm going to go through project and we'll go to open, find our signet. Okay. And I'm just using this as a conversion tool right now. So I'll right click on my model and say export part as Wavefront OBJ. Why am I doing this? Well, the funny story is that with Rhino, it exports an STL file whose geometry, when converted to an OBJ, works fine in ZBrush. So we'll call this uh, signet from STL, just so we know which one's which. Save that out and close out of that now. Minimize that. And now that I'm dealing with this file, I am going to change my document basically. If I click on PolyMesh 3D, that's kind of like ZBrush's default um, mesh, I guess. So whenever I'm switching meshes and, and I want to import another mesh, I always click on PolyMesh 3D first before I change the mesh that I'm creating. Because sometimes ZBrush tries to overwrite the present mesh and uh, all kinds of weird things. So if you get frustrated with ZBrush, this is a workflow that you get used to after a while. All right, so back to this import. And grab this one. There we go. Okay. And these have different names, so it's easy to keep track. This is the one that we want versus the old one clicking back and forth between them. Um, so here we go. Again, if I take a look at the surface of this, it's very similar to the other one, but uh, in this case here, it shouldn't fall apart in the same way. So uh, now what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit Dynamesh, and look at that. Much better job. But a couple things to note. Um, Dynamesh resolution that we're dealing with at the moment is quite low. Uh, as you can see here, you can get some weird artifacting going across the edges, and we don't really want that. So I'm just going to undo that real quick. Control Z. I'm going to change my uh, my resolution. I always go up in increments of two. So it was at 128 before. Now we're at 256. And I'll hit Dynamesh again and see what we get. It's starting to look better, um, but my instinct tells me that this is still probably not enough resolution for our purposes. And you might think, well, that's a hell of a lot of polygons. And it is, but for ZBrush, it's not so much. Right now, it's actually dealing with 170,000 polygons um, and many other pieces of software that can cause things to come to a, a complete slowdown and chug. ZBrush, it's just breezes on past. So I'll undo that once again. I'm going to go up to uh, 512 and hit Dynamesh again. All right, so now nice and smooth. Um, and we're up at... Uh, 679,000 polygons. Still not as high as I might push it, but I'll just stop there for now. If I come back and I turn off polyframe, you'll notice that those wonky edges have more or less disappeared as far as this is concerned in terms of casting and whatnot or 3D printing. Uh, this resolu this you know, ring is going to be small, <laughs> so any of those little strange pieces there, they're not going to make any real difference in the end. Um, this uh, sort of faceting that we're seeing on the surface here can be smoothed out, and so I'm not worried about that either. And I think it's probably best if I simply stop the video here. Uh, one little thing that before I stop the video that I have been doing that I haven't been uh, mentioning, and it's worthwhile mentioning, in order to snap your object to a particular orthographic position, 
uh, is just while you're dragging, hold down the shift key. Okay, so shift and drag and it will lock it, which is nice because by default, um, when you open up your ZBrush scene, there is no perspective. You can change that. There is a little perspective button here. So if I click on that, now I do have perspective and you can see that when I click and drag, I am getting perspective distortion. But uh, for our purposes, working in an orthographic um, workspace will be best. So I'm going to stop the video here, and in the next video we'll take a look at uh, getting this ready for projection and uh, dealing with that.